Welcome back to the toast and happy Wem Wednesday. I was going to say hump day and Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's having an amazing day. Hey, Jax, how you doing? Were you going to say Cody Simpson and Luke Bryan? Let's talk about it. I'm so glad you brought it up immediately. Claudia, the way that brought me so much joy yesterday, and of course I feel shame, and I have to come on here and say, I was wrong. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better. The do Are be you listening and learning? Yeah. Okay. The do better piece is going to be hard for me, though, because I didn't know I was doing wrong. Like, I watched Listen. the clip over and over again, and I'm like, what is going on in that girl's brain? We're giving grace here at The Toast. We forgive you. We want to forgive you, and we want to forget you. The thing you. is, I don't even really need forgiveness because it's become such a funny piece of content that once again, I kind of slayed the house down boots at my job. Okay, correct. I just am a little concerned for myself. The thing is, you have so much going on. You know, you're running a business. You're a family woman. You're a mother of two. You're just like nonstop author. You know, you're just, you're honestly doing too much. You're on like a Saqqara cleanse all at the same time. It's too much. We forgive you. Thank you so much. I definitely short circuited. And I can't say that it's not going to happen again because like I didn't do anything to make that happen. But I've been humbled. No, no, and we loved it. And next time you tell me that I've said something, and don't abuse this, but next time that you tell me that I've said something, like I will be more inclined to believe you because I'm doubting myself now. I am. So what you're saying is like I have like a little bit of credit in the bank. Yes, yeah, so you earned some credibility yesterday and I lost some. Oh, obsessed. That never happens. Um, thank you so much for, for that. Um, it's hump day. A gorgeous day here at the Toast. A little programming update. Wednesday is when we do Dear Toasters. We've decided to do it tomorrow because today we have our Vanderpump Rules recap. Jackie and I both watched and I caught up on last week's episode too. So I'm like fully caught up on the, the drama. We've got a lot of VPR to talk about today. The Kurds can only handle so much. And we'll be together tomorrow for Dear Toasters so we can really collaborate on advice. Yes, some more programming updates. The remainder of the week after today, Jackson Clurd will be doing my least favorite thing, and that will be podcasting in person together. I hate, I actually love podcasting in person with you after we get like a few shows under Agreed. our belt. That first show back, like not remote, looking each other in the eyes, like I didn't know I could feel so awkward to someone I'm so close to. Do you know what I mean? Okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> no, it's horrible. Okay, well, we're going to have fun. We have a really fun week planned. And today, in honor of hump day and toast anniversary and all the excitement, Bruno has decided to show up to work. He's sitting with his mommy, but that's also because I stepped out of the studio for a second and he got into my protein bar. Oh, no, was he it had, chocolate? Yeah, but he had just got his paws on it when I walked back in. Okay, it's giving Tom and Ariana. You're giving dog murderer. Totally, like she would have called me an attempted dog murderer. And I would um, disagree. I also left a huge cup of coffee right here that could kill him without a lid on top. I'm, I just trust my boy too much. Can we also talk about um, Toastiversary at a glance? Because I, for one, felt like an overwhelming amount. Like I received so much love, so much congratulations, so much, so many well wishes yesterday from friends who listened to the show, from the Toasters, from the Reels community. I really felt like I properly um, celebrated this moment. And commemorated. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like I sat in the space and that like six years, check, I feel it, we can move on in a, in a good way. Like I feel like sometimes things pass us by and like, oh, I didn't even process that. I feel thoroughly processed. Me too. I feel really good and happy and I loved it. And, and I'm so excited for our party. We can begin the celebration. We have a really epic party plan. We have an epic sponsor. We do. Amazon came through with like everything we honestly I was prepared to like go into full like wedding planning mode I haven't lifted a finger the girls at Amazon and their agency have really just been like kind of killing it and I got like a little bit of sneak peek we don't we haven't really even been a part of like the design process they're like we got it they're all toasters they're like we know so I got a little sneak peek yesterday at some of the decor like what the vibe is um and it's kind of stunning I'm so excited to party hardy with and Amazon, the with the toasters, with toast friends and family, with just our community of people who have been there for us along the way. It's going to be a really nice way to like wrap up this week and move on to the next era of toast. So true. And I spoke to the DJs yesterday and um, it's our friends Gabe and Austin. They're like this DJ duo called Disco Sauce. And they the last time they were DJing, um, I feel like I haven't said this on the toast yet, that like my official song of the 5K, I found it. Have I said this yet? Uh, tell me and I'll let you know. 
the song that I will be playing at like the very last two minutes of the 5K, the song that I feel really um, lyrically encapsulates this journey I've been on is Invincible by Kelly Clarkson. Obsessed. Um, and so when I discovered it, like that night, I went out to one of Gabe and Austin's DJing gigs and I was like so drunk in the DJ booth. I was like, <laughs> play Kelly Clarkson, play Invincible by Kelly Clarkson. And they were like, no. Um, but then now that they're playing the party, they're like, don't worry, we've already downloaded Invincible by Kelly Clarkson. I said, okay, great. That song's for me. And then I gave one song for you. I'm not going to tell what it is, but you'll know when they played at the party that I requested it for you. Oh, thank you. I feel like we should put together like kind of a short list of songs that are core. Like, to yes, but they're really like excellent DJs. Like I trust them to just like get the vibes. You yeah, know what I mean? Even yeah. though they're not, it's not going to be like songs from Toast Herstory. Like it's just good music. It's not going to be legends and this is a greatest show. A legends would be good. I'll unite. <gasps> Okay, you know what? Just l- leave like, it to me. And also, we should give it to them in advance so they could like remix them. Okay, okay, fine. Like how we relate into legends mashup. Put together a list. We couldn't get DJ Earworm. No, he was a little bit too busy making his next United States of Pop mix. Okay, I want to. I want to manifest something. I want to put it out there to the toasters because I, now I have an amazing idea. Earworm on the toast. No, an earworm toasty mashup mix. Like if anybody knows DJ Earworm, we have about like 20 songs that are core to the toast. And like, I would love, like this would be one of the coolest things that could ever come my way if DJ Earworm would make up a mashup of all toast bops. I love that so much. I'm asking you earworm hat in hand, humbly. If I had to pay, I would be happy to pay. I don't know yeah, how of course. it works. I don't know how it works for a bespoke mashup. A bespoke mashup, yeah. Um, but if you know DJ Earworm, if you're in his community, um, please show this to him. Let him know I'm like seriously a huge fan. And that would mean a lot to me. I love putting things out there. Yeah, I'm just going to so put that out that. There. I'm just going to put it out. I'm going to put out that you kind of look gorgeous today. Are you doing something different? So yeah, I actually got a new pair of sneakers, which kind of changes so everything did I. for a girl. So did I, and I'm wearing them. And I revolved my whole outfit around my new pair of sneakers because they have this nice pistachio new balance logo okay we're both wearing our new sneakers from dsw which is a new sponsor i'm wearing my my new balance too but mine are like the very like grandma orthotics look that's like very on trend right now let me see yours lift up your leg a little higher. they have like a little bit of a platform so cute and they are so comfortable i think i'm gonna bring them with me on my trip i'm gonna be doing a lot of walking so i am needing like good sneakers and so i did a big dsw haul for like sandals sneakers you know spring shoes and i'm wearing them today same. I got so many cute sneakers because I've just been like in a sneaker era. It's sneaker night in the words of Vanessa Hudgens. I got really cute sandals. Put your like- sneakers on. <laughs> Get really your sneakers sandals. on. Claudia, I got the cutest pair of flats from DSW. The brand, so did I. The brand. I wonder if you got the same ones. Jessica Simpson. Okay. So it's not your mom's DSW. Like low-key DSW, I feel like has like really reinvented themselves over the last couple of years. Every brand that I was looking for, I was able to get on DSW. They have Birkenstock, they have Ugg, they have Teva, they have Converse, Crocs, New, New Balance, Balance, that's what I'm wearing. Puma. I got I got a pair of Mark Fisher, I got a pair of Steve Madden, they also have like Nike and Adidas. Um, so for the spring season, our key must have styles are, you know, colorful sandals, sporty sandals, fashion sneakers, versatile flats, Jackie loves a grandma flat. All the must have styles that pair with everything this spring are popping at DSW. And honestly, I'm loving life with my new sneakers. Me as well. So I picked out the sweater to match with my sneaker and then I picked out this hairdo to match with my sweater. So thank you DSWs for inspiring the Luke. For inspiring fashion within a fashionista. Ooh, that needs work. Okay, thank you DSW for inspiring Luke's from a from Luke's Combs fans. I like that. That's, there's something there. Luke's Combs. So with wedding, with like uh, wedding season coming up, I feel like summertime is just the time where people travel a lot. And if you're traveling and like, especially if you're going like a walking place, but you want to look cute, but also like not get blisters, DSW is a really great website to shop at, like for all of your shoe needs this summer, whether you're traveling, whether you're going to a wedding get, as a guest, having date night, going to dinner, just different events. I feel like summer is a time where we're all like, let's do stuff. Events, events, I want to go to events, invite me to your events. I feel like that's the vibe for summer. 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 How many songs can we fit into this? Into, it's an amazing question. So um, also with my new like jeans life, I have a really hard time figuring out. Like once I found jeans, which was the hardest thing on the planet, I didn't know what shoes to wear. Like what shoes do you wear with jeans? And if they're long, like you need heels. So my big DSW haul, uh, a big top topic of top of mind for me was like, which shoes can I wear with 
jeans and I got a bunch of different like heel heights. These New Balance sneakers that I'm wearing have like a little bit of a platform. So with my crop jean, it worked. But like what shoes are we wearing with, with jeans? Flats, Mary Jane. Flats, I did get a nice pair of flats. And I love that they carry Jessica Simpson at DSW. So I just think it's time that like, everybody knows DSW is, is just doing more than they've ever been done before. And any preconceived notions you might have about DSW, you're wrong, once again. You guys are always wrong. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Explore all the latest spring styles at your nearest DSW store, or you can shop online at DSW.com. And I have to say, shopping in person at DSW is like a very pleasant experience. I find shoe shopping to be, I find shopping in person like not to be my favorite thing. Shopping for shoes is like a low lift, you know? Like if size doesn't fit, it's not a big of deal. Of course, you know? and it's not like a personal attack on you. Right, right. And I just feel like DSW has really positive energy in the store. And especially for spring, like spring into spring with new fashion trends at DSW. Explore all the latest spring styles at your nearest DSW or online at dsw.com. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, You're DSW. welcome. Um, so what did you do last night? I know you're like busy getting ready for your trip. I'm so excited to see you. Yes, I'm so excited to see you. I've been packing, plotting my fits. I think I'm in a pretty good place. Just got to put the finishing touches on everything and just getting really excited. And then I watched Vanderpump Rules. Bruno and I so watched I. together. Romeo and I watched together as well. What did Romeo um, think? Romeo was into it. Romeo was really into it. I feel like I um, have like really unique POVs on. I feel like people don't agree with some of my takes, but like I literally felt so bad for Joe. In the girl situation or the Tom situation? Tom. Yeah, we'll we'll have to talk about that. Yeah, and we have some Vanderpump Nuls, so. Vanderpump News so the recap will be at the end of today's show and the stories tell me a little bit about them so like they're not my favorite stories that I've ever picked I'm not gonna lie but I feel as though we will make them great again and those are like the better <laughs> stories of course those are the better episodes like when yeah you know we have less to work with we have to get scrappy yeah they're interesting stories for sure but definitely it's a Wednesday vibe Okay, and speaking of Scrappy, uh, Jackie and I recorded yesterday and posted on our Patreon part two of Toast Herstory episodes. So Jackie and I sat down last week to do just sort of an at-a-glance episode, talk about all we've, you know, experienced on the toast, what we've learned the last six years, different moments, opportunities. And when we sat down to do it the first time, we ended up like getting really negative and dark. So we decided to do it part two where we were going to remain positive, And we did. And we did. We did. It was a challenge. So if you've been loving the at-a-glance cock, 10 if you are an OG toaster and you want to like relive all those early memories with us and see them from like our private POV or if you're a new toaster and like want to hear about all these things that like you don't even know you don't toast know about. origins it's really for everyone so patreon.com slash the toast we're gonna have really great content we're doing a documentary about our toast anniversary party which is gonna By be very way, exciting this documentary has been like an idea of yours like you're totally have like we do we like have we made any strides in like filming it because we're not gonna film it ourselves no, we haven't started filming it, but we have a videographer for the party. Yeah, but like a documentary, like just have you spoken to the videographer about your concept? About my vision, no. Cool, and like is the videographer gonna get ready with us? Like, no, it's a, you've these made, are really good questions. Made, yeah, because you said like this is a, a documentary about the party that we're not gonna film ourselves, we're bringing in a camera crew. Yeah. Where is said camera crew? No, no, these are fantastic questions. Um, I definitely have dropped the ball on my vision, I'll admit yeah. that. I, let me text to get in touch. I need the number of my videographer, of my documentarian. Gosh. Especially because like the videographer will be down at the party and we'll be, you know, getting ready. And is he going to be with us? Asking us questions, like things like that. I'm texting. Is there, Josh. is the videographer who's doing the party, is there a two man team? One can come and get ready with us? All of these are incredibly fair questions that I have no answers to. Okay. okay, I'm getting the videographer number, so soon I'll have And answers. does the videographer even know that they're making a documentary? No, I don't know what they think they're videoing. They're videoing the party, like how every like wedding has a videographer. Like a mitzvah video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so we're at, you know, we're at beginning stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to definitely have an intro call. But the thing is, it's not too late because the documentary wouldn't have even started. I'm not even in New York. No, 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 no. It's so good. It's fine. And if I have to film some things myself, I will. Yeah, I I've got my Canon G7X. Oh, she's a real influencer now. I'm a content creator. What <gasps> can I say? Wait, I totally forgot to talk about this on yesterday's episode. How like kind of a crazy thing happened to me. What? Margot sent me this TikTok of a cute little girly. She's like a micro influencer in New York, and it was like her moving vlog. I'm like, why the fuck did Margot send this to me? I don't give a fuck. 
she moved into my apartment. Yeah. It was like so crazy to see like your apartment, like some like get out of my apartment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Had it look. It was so crazy. And what are the odds that two influencers back to back would live in that apartment? Are you gonna follow her now? No, no. I honestly it felt it was painful. I loved that apartment. Yeah, that was a good apartment too. Can you send me the video? I wanna see it. Yeah, it was so crazy. And like honestly, I need her to do a house tour. Like I'm just curious to see how she'll do it differently. Yeah. I'll never not see it as your place though with your thing no but they stayed in the floors like things were different ben's like that's not our apartment the floors are different i'm like no it's literally our apartment that's exciting that it, it was so crazy like, has influenced our attraction energy and so i've seen that happen on a few other like big tiktokers like wishbone kitchen she made she's like was watching someone else's video another influencer she's like i think you live in my building and they like met up because they had like the same floor plan and then i saw you know, chris olsen he had moved into Alex Cooper's apartment. Like, people on the internet figured it out. So I'm just like a part of like, you know, influencer history. History. I think that happened to Margot too. Yes! Yes, Margot, Margot just moved. moved into a, an influencer's former apartment. Yes. It's, it's just also proof there's literally five apartments in New York. Like, <laughs> That is really funny. And that's like the weird thing about renting. It's like, it's really not your own. Even though no. like my ass lived there for five years. Like, that will always be my apartment. It was your temporary home. It's now what song where is you that? belong. Windows and rooms that she's walking through. Temporary Never. Home by Carrie Underwood. Oh, of course. Temporary <laughs> Home. It's kind of a crazy song. It's a weird ass title. No, it's a weird song. But she did it. She said. I honestly it. feel like that was her way of competing with Miranda Lambert's The House That Built Me. I was me. just about to say, because it's the actual polar opposite message. Like, The House That Built Me, it's like, this will always be my house. My favorite dog is buried in the yard. Like, no matter who moves in, like, these, this is my place. Temporary home is like, I, this is a temporary home. Windows and rooms that I'm walking through. Like, I don't know. No, when. The House That Built Me by Miranda Lambert is like one of the most beautiful songs on the planet. I feel like it, people write songs about like, love most of the time and it's rare that somebody writes a song about like something totally random like a house um but to so poignantly describe the feeling of like the house you grew up in not even maybe the house you grew up in a place in your life that you know was important to you and you had fond memories and you really came into your own it's such a beautiful song it is i wind up having it in my head all the time i thought if i could touch this place or feel it this brokenness inside me might start healing. I sound okay, right? I thought that was Yeah, good. you sound okay. Like, that wasn't bad. No, no, it wasn't, like, embarrassing. Yeah, no, like, I hit the proper notes. The notes were hit. That's what more can you ask for from me? Nothing. Right. Well, actually, what more I could ask for? A documentary. On my toast anniversary. Yeah, don't worry. Don't I'm worry. I'm not worried. We'll get her done. Um, what else is going on with you before we dive into the Fast Five? I'm like so worried that the Fast Five is not going to be of note that like don't, I just want to make sure we have good chunks worry, at the beginning of the show. Don't ever worry. And I actually okay. have to get on with my packing. So without further ado. Sure. It is time for the Fast Five stories that you need to know that you need not be worried about. And you need not be worried about Clarence, okay? You've been adulting for a while, and so the daily stress of swiping left, binging the fourth season of Gossip Girl until 2 a.m. instead of getting the recommended eight hours of sleep, and just trying to keep your life together can cause stress aging. It is a thing, and the good news is that Europe's number one skincare line has a solution that you can trust. Rooted in nature and innovated with science, Clarence has a long legacy of creating industry-first, plant-forward products. Using a skin charger complex made of 2% niacinamide and C. holly bioextract, Clarence Multiactive Cream has been clinically proven to target the first visible signs of aging by smoothing lines and wrinkles, refining pores, evening tone and texture, and strengthening the skin's moisture barrier. Let me say I completely emptied out this jar of cream. It is fabulous. Smells like heaven. Works amazing. So moisturizing. Top 10, one of my favorite skin products I have used probably in my lifetime. Um, it's the multi-active cream that can't bring back the golden age of boy bands, but it can de-stress your skin. You know, if you listen to the show, you're probably of a certain age and it's time for a cream. 
Might I recommend Clarins? Go to Clarins.com slash toast to get multi-active day and night cream for 10% off, a free welcome gift, plus free shipping on your first order. Yeah, that's a lot. Also, I love this cream because a lot of the moisturizers I have used in the past that are like heavy because I like a really moisturizing, like hydrating moisturizer, um, can really only be used at night. This one you can use any time of day. So that's C-L-A-R-I-N-S dot com slash toast, promo code toast, Clarins.com slash toast, promo code toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Skylight Frames. As Mother Day approaches, you've been thinking about connecting with your mother, have you? Well, if you want to be like the favorite child in your family this year and you don't want to miss a moment of your life, of your kid's life, your mom's life, check out Skylight Frames. Anyone can handle the Skylight Frame, even the least tech-savvy queen on the planet or for you know a grandmother for for mother's day as well you don't need to be very tech savvy to be able to use the skylight frame it is a perfect gift for moms and grandmas it is a digital picture frame that keeps your whole family connected just in time for mother's day and our listeners are getting 15 percent off so hang tight What's so great about the Skylight Frame? I'm so glad you asked. Well, anyone can send photos to the frame in just seconds via email or the app. It's a great way to keep in touch with friends and family. If you've got growing kids and you want Grand to see updated pictures of them every week, send new photos of the kids. The Skylight Frame has a gorgeous touchscreen, comes in two sizes, the original 10-inch or the newer 15-inch gallery frame. You can swipe through photos with your finger, even tap the heart button to thank the person who sent the photo. They also have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your Skylight, they will offer you a full refund. Super simple to use, takes less than 60 seconds to set up, and even the least tech-savvy gran can use it. So as a special limited time offer for our listeners, get 15% off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash toast. That's S-K-Y-L. L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com slash toast. Mother's Day is right around the corner. So order today and get 15% off your purchase at skylightframe.com slash toast. Thank you, La Turtaloo. You're welcome, Le, le Jertaloo. Our first story, Jelly Roll recalls turning down a meeting with Diddy. So Jelly Roll was on the canceled podcast, which has to do with us because Claudia is podcasting with Brooke Schofield I am. when she's in LA. Yeah, um, not to make everything about us. But he recalled declining to meet with Diddy after they appeared on the same episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live last fall. So he said, this is the first time in my career ever where they said, do you want to meet such and such? And I said, yeah. I started walking that way. And as I was getting down the hallway, this is a true story, I said, nah, and got back in the car. He said he didn't know what it was that made him want to skip out on the opportunity to meet Diddy last October. And of course, now he looks like a prophet. He said, I made it when he was on the show because they were on uh, Kimmel together on the same night. He said, I made a joke at first. Nobody thought that was funny. So I was like, oh, that's a bomb. Maybe I shouldn't go and do this anyway. So I was already skeptical because I thought I had a funny one. He made a joke about like Tupac and Diddy. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then he said he got a bad feeling about meeting Diddy. He said, when we were walking, I was like, I don't know. Very seldom do things rub me in a way where I was like, I don't even know if that's a picture that I want to take. So he's explained right, that, that right. He, he explained that he's been in situations where he's had to take photos with people he didn't want to be with. He was like, quote, motherfuckers will walk a carpet around the same time. Shit happens. They're like, hey, y'all get together. And you're like, I don't really even know who this human is. No, by the way, that's what we always say about Ghislaine Maxwell. Yeah. Like part of celebrity culture is just taking a million fucking photos. And that's why so many celebrities who I truly believe had nothing to do with Epstein Island had thousands of photos with Ghislaine Epstein. I mean, Ghislaine Maxwell. Yes, yes. So he's like talking about that. And then, but Diddy didn't like ask me Jelly Roll. It's probably producers being like, hey, you want to meet yeah, Diddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to? So he's like walking down the hallway and then just like got a bad feeling. I don't know so if I got, watched like, the feeling, oh, this person's soon going to be arrested for sex trafficking. Yeah, no. I feel like maybe he just had like a bout of anxiety because I watched this documentary and he was like very on edge a lot and like he was nervous a lot of the time and like would say no to things because like of his sort of like mental health. So I feel like maybe that's what happened. But now in hindsight, it looks like, you know, he was being protected from something. Yeah, and he was on the podcast with his wife, who's also a podcaster. Mm-hmm. And he also, Jelly Roll, like, is the reason why you're doing the 5K. Yes. You know that, right? Yeah, I remember. That's what started the whole 5K thing. The story about Jelly Roll. Yeah, so you'll see I ran in the park yesterday. By the way, I'm like embarrassed to say, because I've lived in New York my whole life, I had never been to the Central Park Reservoir. And that's like a thing. Where in the park is it? It's uptown. It's like in the 90s. Things happen. I I feel like everyone has their corner of the park. 
It's true, but like it's like a famous one. You know, if you guys remember that part in Sex and the City where Charlotte is pregnant, but she's afraid to run. Yeah. And then like she gets to run and she's running by the water. That's the reservoir. And honestly, it's kind of such an iconic part of the city. When I was walking around, I was literally pointing things out like Sex and the City, Gossip Girl. It really like so much of, you know, New York in the movies and TV shows is filmed up there. And I ran outside and honestly, running outside is so weird. Better you know or worse I mean? than the treadmill? I don't know. Because like, you take I longer don't strides, I, I just learned. I don't know. I feel like weird. I just thought like everyone was looking at me like not in a good way. And I was just like, why am I running outside? It just felt like unnatural. What is she running from? But I need to get used to it because the 5K is outside. Yeah. The 5K is also at the Rose Bowl. How do you have a 5K at a concert venue? I'm, I've never been there. in circles? Maybe run is around that what the it, arena in the parking lot? Oh, so it's a really big stadium. I think you're right. You probably run around it. That looks like hot. It's like no trees or anything. Maybe you should and get a hat for the 5K we're, tonight. We're getting closer to the Rose Bowl, and I just have like a bad, I mean, to the 5K, I just have a bad feeling about it. No, Claude, it's going to be great. Jelly Roll will be there. I don't see any trees. Like, there's no shaded Seriously, areas Claudia, for me to run. Seriously, Claudia, nobody is training harder for this 5K than you, and you're in good shape. Nobody had more work than me. No, all the guys, I, that's the point of it. Like, Tom and Bird and Jelly Roll. I spoke and to... His school, um, his friends, and his mom. I spoke to Josh Peck today. He started training today. Yeah, Claudia, you're ahead of the pack. <coughs> I'm really not. No, you Although really are. my running coach, Tom, did say like he thinks I'll be able to run straight for the whole 5K by that time. So that's so crazy. Goals. Yeah. What if I like won the 5K? Like that would be so funny. Yeah. What do you think I would get? I don't know. I don't think you should want to win it. Like I, then I think you're like doing too much. Trust and believe winning it is I was like it's not an, a possibility. No, but even if you were like about to be first, like I think you shouldn't because it's just like not the vibe. For this, yeah. the 5K, this one. Yeah. Because everyone's going to be like, the cool people are going to be in the back, I think. You're going to actually probably have to slow down if you want to make some connections. Yeah, no, I'm using this as a networking opportunity. So like I will be following around the most famous person there, you know? Yeah. Right now, of you, of who's going that you know that's going, who are you most excited to schmooze with? Well, I just found out someone who I was like really excited to <laughs> to see there. And, and I'm like, I don't want to spoil anything, but they're not coming. Me? No, but yes, but no. Who? Like, I don't want to, I don't know if I could say it. You know what I mean? Okay. But like. Hmm? Oh. Okay. He's not running it. But you'll, you'll network another time with that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I would love a list of all the famous people going so I, and like what their numbers are going to be so I can follow them around. Yeah. <laughs> their also, numbers. Drop links in the comment section. I need to know like what equipment I need. Like I, I think I need to get an Apple watch. For? Like my pace and my time, like, and my heart rate, like a million Claudia, things. You can't also, buy an Apple watch, seriously. No, I know. But the thing is for music too, I can't be bringing my phone on the 5K. Okay, fine. You make a fair point for that only. No, I was talking to my running coach yesterday and he was like, he has You don't like think a they'll have one. music on the speakers? You can't put music in your ears. How are you in the network? Oh, no, I need music in my ears. How am I going to listen to Invincible by Kelly Clarkson? How are you going to network? I, I like. I think I need to get an iPod or something. But then I was like, if I'm going to get a device, it needs to be an Apple Watch, Jackie. That way I can like do my music, my playlist, track my steps, my time, my heartbeat. You know? Fine, but then you can't tell Turdy that you're getting an Apple Watch because she'll I make know. fun of you. I know. I think I'll return it after the 5K. I'll buy it the same day. You You'll know? return it? I'll return. How do you borrow someone's? I feel like it's like so personal. You can't just like borrow an Apple Watch. Apple Watch is more personal than comedy? Precisely. Okay. Well, keep us posted on your wearable tech of choice. No, please drop a comment. Like, what do I need for a 5K? And also, like yesterday I was running with sunglasses and they were pissing me off, hat. sliding down my nose. I think I need to wear a hat. To the party tonight. Precisely. Yeah. Also, I, I haven't really made this big announcement yet, but I, I got a sponsor for like people wanted a piece of turdy this is kind of the 5k that everybody's been talking about and i got a sponsor they wanted me to wear their stuff oh who should i spoil it i mean sure right yeah yeah it's reebok sick they'll be outfitting yeah. turd 
They've got sick new running shoes that just were released. I got a sick new pair, and that's what I'll be running in. Interesting. Yeah. Like a little NASCAR. NASCAR for comedians. Well, yeah, I was saying, like, there's so much, like, fodder around this 5K. Like, can I make some money if I'm going to be running? And I did. Love it. Love it. Business. Business. Speaking of business, our next story is some biz news and celeb news. Jessica Alba has stepped down as the Honest Company's chief creative officer, though not in a nefarious way. So Jessica That's Alba's- That's kind of weird. It is. It sounds like it, but then it's not. I think it's like the natural thing that happens when your business just gets to be huge. Huge. So she's stepping down as CCO of the Honest Company. She co-founded the baby products and personal care business oh in my 2012. God. I just realized I haven't been wearing lipstick this whole time. I'm going to look so men- like terminally ill Don't on worry, the show. We won't clip anything from the beginning. Don't okay, worry. Okay. She said, while there would never have been an easy time to make this decision, I know we have a leadership team in place with the CEO at the helm to advance our founding vision and strengthen Honest's legacy as an industry change maker. She said that she would shift her creative energy to new endeavors while continuing to bri- provide her support and leadership on the board of directors. So she's still on the board of directors and she'll still be involved, but not so much in the day to day, which I think is what happens when like the brand just it's becomes a sign bigger of growth. than you. Yeah. That's like, yeah. you know, the intern. Exactly, that's what I was thinking. But also, I feel like when we talk about celebrity brands, we don't talk about Honest Company because it's so much bigger than Jessica Alba. But honestly, she doesn't get enough credit for like, literally, I feel, revitalizing the baby industry. Like, she was one of the first to go like organic and green. Yeah. No, it makes total sense. And if I could see, like now as a mom, like now we have all of these options for clean baby companies and there is not like uh, this need in the market. But I'm sure... 15 years ago being like what what are all these chemicals in these products and then having the means to start a company like it's so smart so and am I wrong to say that like you you trust it's a company you trust right honest yeah I I don't really use their products but like I like their mission and there's no reason why not but like I said there are a lot of companies who do stuff like this now yeah so I just I use other products but clean is clean Clean is clean. Good for her. And I feel like it's like valued at over a billion dollars, right? Probably. And when we talk about celebrity billionaires, like we don't talk about her. I'm sure she has partners and stuff. Yeah, but she really killed that. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. So some biz news. Love to see women in finance. Our next story is a, a bit of TV news that will not be. For Game of Thrones fans, Kit Harrington has confirmed that the Game of Thrones spinoff series about Jon Snow is off the table. I'm sad for him, honestly. The thing is, is that I didn't even know it was on the table, so I my life remains unaffected. So he, uh, he provided a disappointing update about the potential spinoff series centered around Jon Snow. He confirmed that the project was no longer in development and was shelved for the foreseeable future after writers and producers couldn't find the right story to tell. He said, I hadn't really ever spoken about it because it was in development. I didn't want it to leak out that it was being developed and I didn't want the thing to happen where people kind of start theorizing, getting either excited about it or hating the idea of it when it may never happen, which is why we didn't really hear much of it. But I guess that was something in the works, which sounds like a good idea. But then I could also see them being like, what's the story here? Uh, But yeah, I was going to say, is it a prequel? What's the spinoff? Is is he playing Jon Snow? Yeah, I think it would have been like life above the wall because that's where he's finishes out his days like at the end of the show he goes to live with the wildlings north of the wall Does he? yeah because he killed daenerys so he can't really stay in the oh spoiler alert yikes he can't really stay there he's like a common criminal and he's killed the queen um and he's so wally you know yeah and he lo- and that and like you know he loved ygrid and he has his friends he What's loved the, the energy the big guy hodor no but the red hair guy, his best friend. Oh, the wildling. Oh, I don't know. Rose's cousin or whatever. Yeah, like those are his people. So it made sense that he would end up there. And that's also like where. Wait, so he went, he ended up living beyond the wall, not working at the wall? Beyond the wall. They don't need to work the wall anymore because. Oh, right, because the Night the King. The wildlings and the Night, the Night Army King. is done. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. I totally forgot like about everybody else's ending in Game of Thrones. I only really remember brands. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Um, but <laughs> no, Dan- but like Daenerys like was the Mad Queen. She had to go. Daenerys still, had to go. He killed the queen. That was like, I really miss those days. Like the last maybe one or two seasons where everyone in the world 
Like I would literally not look at my phone for a whole hour and I would, after the episode, go on my phone and there was nothing there because everyone was watching. I miss that. Yeah, well, House of the Dragon comes back soon, actually. I was actually just going to bring that up. The obsession we had with House of the Dragon and, and this very moment, I couldn't tell you what the show was about. Like, I couldn't tell you one person's name, Viserys. Yeah, Damon. Yeah, is that right? Damon. I love Damon. Rhaenyra. I liked young Rhaenyra. Old Rhaenyra didn't do it for me. Alice. Is that the dad's girly? The, the swirly girly high tower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am excited for that. I'm excited for that too. I saw a headline recently, like it comes back kind of soon because it's been a long time. Yeah, but the strike fucked things up. Sagaftra. Like shows, so shows that were already going to be taking a long time for whatever reason are now pushed back another six months. It's been a month, I think, since I said Sagaftra, so I just need to say it. I need to hit my sag after feel better? for the year. Yeah, try it. It's like a, war a verbal warm-up exercise. sag -afstra. No, I don't like it, actually. Oh, for me, I feel like I hit every syllable. sag No, actually, I don't like it at all. It doesn't. sag -afstra. No, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all, actually. sag -afstra. I like hearing you say it. I'm, I'm actually pissed off, like... Say I don't it? like it. Yeah, it's wrong. What's the word you like to say? Guttural. I don't like that. For me. Words more personal than comedy. More personal than what did you just than say? Sponsorships. Than Apple Watches. Oh yeah. Also, um, a word that I like: emblematic. Oh, of course, nefarious. But that one I like more for Referendum. Its, I like more for their meanings, less for their pronunciation. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Agreed. Well, this is sad. I mostly feel sad for Kit Harrington because where do you go after being Jon Snow? You hope there's another Jon Snow moment for you is what you hope for. Okay, let me ask you a question because I think about this a lot. There were a lot of like really iconic actors who got their start on Game of Thrones and the ones that went the furthest were not the biggest. Like... Khal Drogo, yeah. Jason Momoa was on the show for one season and he's probably the most famous person to come out of that show. Amelia Clark, she had a quick career after a couple of movies, but still not anything groundbreaking. And the men, the handsome men, Richard Madden, Kid Richard Harrington. Richard Madden is around. He, he did stuff. Not no, and to he the does level. stuff that we don't watch. I think he's in like series. Is. Yeah, The Bodyguard. Margot loves that show. Um, but like, not a lot. Yeah, it's hard. And I think it's so odd. And I'm, I'm wondering if it's by choice. Do you think Jon Snow made so much money no. from that one show? No, me neither. I don't think it's by choice. Okay. I think it's hard to get people to see you as something else. And it can be done, but like with a lot of work and a lot of like back end industry work of like your people hustling for you. And I just feel like these are serious like British actors. They're not playing the Hollywood game. No, Sophie Turner played the Hollywood game. Yeah, a little bit, but still on an acting level. She, oh, she's in X-Men. Sorry. Yeah. And she did a lot after Game of Thrones. I feel like she's now intentionally taking a little time off to be like a mom and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you, you're right. She And she, I feel like, is so Hollywood. Yeah. She married the Jonas Brothers. She got the guy. Mm-hmm. But now she's with Paddington Pellegrino. Yeah. Pa Paddington Pellegrino. I know, the, I know exactly what you're And the good news is, about. is you all know who I'm talking about. Yep. Okay, are you ready for our next story? Our fourth story is a little more content news. I am. Joker 2 trailer has dropped. Fale Adu with Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. This movie has another one been talked about, swirly, girly swirling around forever. And now the trailer dropped. I watched a few seconds of it. Like, seriously, it looks so dreadful. But I think that's the point. And obviously, this isn't for me. But, like, mm -hmm. the theme of the movie is dread. So um, I actually didn't see the trailer. I saw a fan edit on Twitter where somebody took parts of the <laughs> trailer and put it to the commercial for Nertech OTD. <laughs> and honestly, I, I saw that. It was better than I think the Joker will be. So I feel good. I feel satiated. I'm not worried. Yeah. So for all you Jokers out there, um, the movie comes ha -ha. out soon. Ha ha ha. Joaquin, Lady Gaga. I'm excited for her to have like another moment. She's I been quiet. Like, she's been really quiet. Music and acting wise. Because she's been working on this. I think she's been doing like method acting. Yeah. She's been Falea doing. Why do you keep saying that? What is that? That's the subheader for this movie. Joker. Falea do. 
Excuse me? Okay, Joker, colon. F-O-L-I-E, space, A with a apostrophe on top, space, D-E-U-X as in Dumois. Is it part two? I guess I could. Do is two. Yeah, so Fale. Because there was the Joker original. I think this means like the second coming. Oh, no. Fale Adu, also known as a shared psychosis psychosis or shared delusional disorder is a rare psychiatric syndrome in which syndrome of, of a delusional belief and sometimes hallucination are transmitted from one individual to another so maybe that's where their characters this kind of feels Neat. like a spoiler it does for sure <laughs> and I feel like this is a movie like I might say no why you sound so like not into it I feel like you, Do you would see like Joker that, huh? one with Joaquin no but like I love Joaquin you do I do should just I just because of walk the line yeah, and I just feel like he's a cutie. And, like, I like his story with his brother. Well, I don't like that story. Obviously, his brother died. But, like, I think he's a man of immense depth. I do. You would see this, like, due to your love of Joaquin, you would see this before you would see, like, Napoleon. Did he play Napoleon? He did. When? At Christmas time. Did you see it? No, I heard really and bad you, things. And you claim to be a Napoleon stan. Okay, no, so I won't see no, it. No, because the said- true stands won't watch it because we heard bad things. Because it's true stands. I can't with you. It's an affront to Napoleonic stanhood. Yeah, and that's why I didn't see it. Queens. Queen. Uh, and also, he is in that movie with the Alexa. Yeah, hey. Hi. Hello. Hello. What was it? Hello. What was that movie called? Hello, right? It's, you know what? We've not done a Joaquin Phoenix deep dive on the show yet. And the thing is, I like really like Joaquin Phoenix, and I've literally seen one of his movies walk the line but it was so good that like i'm a he has a fan forever in me yeah i just want like gonna live forever in me so there's something Uh, about joaquin phoenix that i'm not sharing with you that's just gonna kind of change everything what wait is it like jonathan glazer energy yeah yeah fuck he signed the letter in support of jonathan glazer And he's kind of the biggest name to sign the letter, so he's leading all the headlines. He gave the letter credibility. Yeah, him and, and Chloe Finan's the other name that I recognized. Ew. So, so sorry to ruin him and her. And her, I love her. See, I was actually thinking about this earlier in the day when I was <sighs> bopping around to Morgan Wallen getting ready and how I was like ragging on him on the show the other day. There are certain people like I really, I am able to separate the artist from the art. And I think feel that way about Morgan Wallen. I feel like a lot of girls love Morgan Wallen for him. Like they want to have sex with him. I don't. Like I really love the music. Oh, that's good that you cleared that up. You know what I mean? Like I don't die for him. Like Luke Combs, I would die for him as a person yeah. and for his music. Yeah. And I know what you thought I was going to say. <laughs> what? That I want to have sex with Luke Combs. That's not what I was going to say. No, I didn't think so. I didn't think you would would say that. I respect his marriage. And your own. You gave like a (laughs) little, you gave like a little smirk and I thought you thought I was going to say that. So with Morgan Wallen, I really am separating the artist from the artist. Certain people, like I can do it. So I think I can separate Joaquin? Joaquin Phoenix from his dumb, you know, signatures. Okay. Just for, it's really just for Walk the Line though, Claudia. There's nothing else here that we kind of, are obsessed with but walk the line is really good yeah and i don't know with some of these like letters i think a lot of people's like you know assistants were like do you want to sign this letter and they were like yeah, yeah. so i feel like signing a letter like while irresponsible i can look past it if it's a little bit more organized like wearing you know a pin and planning your whole outfit around like it's a little bit more than that you know i'm i might not be able to separate the art from the artist but just because you signed a letter honestly i'm not gonna write you okay off. i just want to say in general i agree with that and i think sometimes they come and they package it like we're signing for peace do you stand mm-hmm. with peace and they're like yes, who does it sign me up right but that's not what this letter was, one. And two, I don't think Joaquin just like willy-nilly signs letters. He's such a Me serious neither. person. But the thing is, shut up, you know? Because I'm separating the art from the artist. Oh, for sure, sure. Okay, okay, okay. Separating. We're separated. Mm. Yeah. And I feel like that's okay. Like, it's okay to like enjoy stuff, you know? Yeah, why do you have to punish yourself? Right. Like, you don't have to like align with everyone's everything and, and like listen to their movie like you're fine you know yeah i don't want to listen to their movie also <laughs> i like saying joaquin phoenix i like to say joaquin phoenix joaquin because there was a ba- basketball player named joaquin phoenix oh is that weird that's funny 
I remember like when I used to watch basketball with Ben, like I was pretending to like it so he would marry me. Um, <laughs> Slay. Uh, there was a guy That's and shit. he had like really curly hair and he was so cute and handsome, like big guy. And his last name was Phoenix and it was spelled like Joaquin, but like Joaquin with a J. And I'm like, what are the odds? It's like two influencers living in the same apartment. It's like two movies being made about Cinderella. Totally. Yeah. Now are you ready for our fifth and final story that's going to lead into our Vanderpump Rules recap because we have some exciting Vanderpump Rules news. If it's the Vanderpump Rules stories that's going to match you by Vanderpump by Fashion Pass. Yes, it is. We're such fashion a pass. fashionable episode today. Yeah, and Fashion Pass was actually started by a toaster. So it's essentially a toast run business and we absolutely love to see that. And we've been using Fashion Pass for years. If you're not familiar, it's the clothing rental service. And why is this different from all other rental services? Oh, because the clothes are actually cute. It's brands you've actually heard of, brands you actually want to shop, clothes that are actually being sold on Revolve right now, but you can get them, rent them at a better price. So they have all the best brands for Love and Lemons, Love Shack Fancy, Good American, Show Me Your Moo Moo, Free People, so many toast favorite brands. And the trendsetter plan, which is their most popular plan, it's a plan that Jackie and I are on. We get four clothing items per order and we can switch those out as often as we want. We don't have to wait for the whole month. Like if we wore them in two weeks, send it back, get new stuff. You're not, you know, uh, also if somebody comes and like you just don't love it, return it. You know, it's not like you're stuck with it for the whole month. They've got you covered for vacations, weddings, bachelorettes, anything bridal related. But what we love about them is they also have the very best everyday pieces. So there's nothing like the feeling of trying on a premium new outfit and being obsessed with it. The shipping is super fast. They take care of the dry cleaning, do everything for you. So you just send it back in the pre-labeled bag. And if you find something that you really love and you actually want to keep it, you can buy it from them at and get a huge discount anywhere from 30 to 80% off. And we have a discount code for you guys. It's the best discount they're currently offering. You're not going to get this anywhere else. If you go to fashionpass.com and use code toast at checkout, you'll get $30 off your first month. So you can try fashion pass for just $89. That's fashionpass.com. Use code toast at checkout. Today's episode is also brought to you by Made in Form, specifically M by Made in Form, their new collection of craveable intimates from Made in Form, a brand that has a whole lot of history. They've been around since the very first bras, and now they're bringing you a new kind of classic, the chicest basics you've ever seen. So M is a collection from Made in Form, and Made in Form is a brand with 100 years of innovation and category leadership. They wrote the book on bras, and M is their next juicy chapter. You have to feel this collection to really believe it. The fabrics are yummy, buttery soft. They feel way more expensive than they are, and it's great style that won't break the bank. The items are really on trend. The designs are made from stretchy, comfy fabrics, and they come in incredible colors. M can be worn as innerwear or outerwear. So I have like one of my favorite items from, it's what I call my relaxation bra. It's such a great bra with adjustable straps. It's got like a band underneath it that covers like my under boob roll. And if I were a different woman, I actually could probably wear it as a cute shirt. I'm sure a lot of people do. So what that's what's so great about it. You can wear it as like clothing, but you could also wear it as like intimates, as a bra. So Go to maidinform.com and use our code. It's toast20. Do that at checkout for 20% off your first purchase. That's maidinform.com. M-A-I-D-E-N-F-O-R-M.com. The code is toast20 for 20% off your first order. It is the chicest basics you'll ever see. And you'll just be happy to have them in your closet, whether you want to wear them, you know, under or over. You know? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our fifth and final story is that Vanderpump Rules star Lala Ken has revealed the sex of her second baby. She did an Amazon yes. Live revealing the sex. And I was so excited to see what it was going to be. Because if it's a girl, it's so exciting. Her girl squad stays strong. If it's a boy, like how exciting to have a girl and boy. Anyway, she's having a girl and she's so excited. And then last night on the show, we saw her going to the sperm bank to begin this process so it's really coming and, full circle and um just something interesting of note because we've been talking about the rumors from the reunion it appeared as though katie was at the gender reveal oh, that's okay. what i saw on twitter oh, i didn't see that but i was i saw it on twitter it. good to know i saw sheena in the footage you know of course sheena in the front row yeah i'm sorry they could never make me hate sheena like after last night's episode i'm sorry when she was mad at brock for telling their kid that they were going to the beach instead of saying we have to work like because she doesn't want her daughter to think that they would leave her for anything other than work like she's so funny i'm sorry they can never make me hate china she's hilarious even though for all the seasons that we did yeah but they could never make me yeah no no even though we had and they did but i think like starting now tabula rasa also like they could never make me uh sheena in her motherhood era is really a joy to watch 
I agree. She's really a very sweet girl. And everybody clowns on her for making everything about herself. Like with the earthquake, some people were tweeting, oh my God, the earthquake in New York. Has anyone checked on Gina? <laughs> like I relate to that part of her on a very deep, profound level. So I'm sorry. They just, they can't make me hate her. Now, I'm very much also in my La La era. And I feel like I haven't been for for a while. You have really always been very tried and true. And I feel like she went through a couple of years where she was beyond unreasonable. And especially last season, against Raquel. I know nobody could take up for Raquel, but before the before the people in the show found out about the affair, we knew about it, but we're watching footage before they know. I'm sorry, Lala was wrong. So I went oh, like hard yeah, on Lala. Oh yeah, they went on that trip and they yep. were really, really mean to her. Yeah, that wasn't my favorite Lala moment, but overall, like I, I really, I've never faltered, but people can have bad moments. And she like, the thing about her is like, she owns it unlike anyone else where she was like, this was a miserable time for me. I was a miserable person. Like I was mean and unhappy and I don't want to be like that. No, and her explanation last night, she's like, I'm in my soft era when she was getting shit from Katie for going to lunch with Joe. Um, I totally see that. She is in her soft era. And so I think a lot of people are like, viewers are saying it's like, she's wishy-washy. People are saying she's like a production mole, like just, you know, but I, I, her explanation of her being in her soft era, like, yes, that's actually what I feel I'm seeing. Yeah, I think that that's fair, but I also think it is conducive to the flow of the show. Someone needs to get lunch with Joe. Yep. But it wouldn't be, if it wasn't Lala, like, it would be Sheena. So yep. she's going to come in to the show regardless. And I like seeing Lala get a hot dog with her. Yeah. Two now, more different girls could you ever find when they're sitting no. across from each other? It's like, how do these two people know each other? You had texted me that um, Schwartz should have been Lala's sperm donor. Anonymously. And honestly. Like, don't ever tell the other, the people in the group. Not that Schwartz can keep a secret. But that's how I felt. Because Schwartz, like, really wants to be a dad. I know, he loves Lala. I know Lala doesn't want any of this mess. Schwartz is, like, very smart and good looking. And I think, you know, he would have nice sperm. Um, but Lala doesn't want, and Schwartz would have to sign something like, this is Lala's baby, like, I'm happy to be here, but I will never like come for this baby because that's so important to Lala. And like yeah, when you custody. hear her talk about it, just it makes so much sense. It's just like I want for Lala, I feel like she takes on so much. Like nobody is doing more in this world for her family and like for her job and just it firing in every cylinder than Lala. And I just hope that one day like she meets someone who's just able to like take stuff off of her plate. Yeah, no, she's very much like in protective mama bear mode at all times and trying to grow her family and her business and be a reality star. Yeah, I think and I think that's also why she just doesn't have the energy to like care about stuff that Katie and Ariana care so deeply about. Yeah, and she just lets things go now. Yeah, and, and I get that I do. But to be honest, I was really appreciative of Ariana breaking down because up until that point I felt like she was being just like so unreasonable and when Lala was like look at his life look at your life and look at his like let this anger go and her finally like crying and saying like I can't let this anger go I'm so angry I'm still so hurt like that is human and that I understand now the stuff with the house is weird but you know what I get it like I do yeah, when she's always angry at him, like calling him scum of the earth and all these things, it's like, oh, we always knew that. So I feel like it's hard for us to see what part of the relationship she might be mourning. So when she shares, like, I told ev this person knew everything about me, like knew me like nobody else did. Like, it's true. But not only did that person hurt me the worst, but I don't have that person in my life anymore. Like, oh, I get it. That can make you a little crazy and sad and angry. And also a little bit, the, even though I think it's like a, absurd, the explanation about the house, like how it was this like a big dream. Like, I get it. I get it. So I actually felt like I was a lot more sympathetic towards Ariana this episode than I had been in the past ones because she just was so hard and she was just so, so tough when like, you know, she has blessings raining on her. Tom Sandoval couldn't be a bigger loser. Seriously, if he tried, like the scenes of him just like hanging out with Billy and Kyle, like it's sad. Like when I climb into bed, I start feeling sad. So... I, I really appreciated the POV, but I do mostly agree with Lala on on that. But it's funny to watch Ariana toggle between like the soft and the hard when she's with Lala and Sheena, like they finally get it out of her. And then she goes to the, that drinks, those drinks, woof, man. Like Wait, what drinks? When they went to that bar, the four girls. Yes. And it was really like Lala and Sheena, yep. just like being soft as they say. And then like Katie's very hard and hard lines and Ariana's like she's obviously with, she's with Katie overall but it's like these two approaches to moving forward 
Yeah, and they couldn't be more opposite, and they both are so extreme. Actually, yeah. I don't feel like Lala and Gina are that extreme. They're I feel just, like, like they're open to moving no, on. They're practicing extreme grace. They are. They are actually, you know, you're right. And the others are are practicing like extreme grudge. grudge. Yeah. yeah, and so there's definitely like the right path in the middle, but neither one of them can get to that. I see both sides because I know if I yeah. were in, if I were in. Katie and Ariana's shoes, I would feel like them and I would behave like them. But I'm not on a reality show and I don't need to see this person. So I really go back and forth between like the humanizing, like that's how I would be. I would not be graceful towards someone who's like lit, ruined my life, but I would no. never see them again. I wouldn't live with them again. Like my yeah. friends wouldn't be friends with this person. Like good, good day, sir. If I were on a show and we have to move forward and this anger is holding me back. Yeah. I'm Lala and Sheena. And I think the Lala and Sheena approach is more enjoyable to watch. I think so too. Well, because otherwise we're just at a standstill and that's boring. Yeah. Um, now, Joe. I had a lot of thoughts on Joe. this episode about Schwartz. And then that obviously leads into Joe. But like just watching this 40-year-old um, dye his hair blonde and go to a singles event and make out with this lady in front of everyone. I climbed into bed and started feeling sad. Like... There was a time where Schwartz's like idiotic nature was endearing and like people like Rihanna loved it, you know? And now it's like you're literally 40 talking about your biological clock and then you're going to a singles event and like making out with like literally this freak who wants to be on TV. Like, no, and so... like you have this girl here. Yes, who's who your lives best with you? Friend who is perfect for you. You're talking about your biological clock. Right, who obviously has feelings for you and you have feelings for because when she said that we can't be close at all, he was sad. He climbed into bed. He started feeling sad. Mm -hmm. And But why is he so adamant that he doesn't want to be in a relationship? Like, what is that? Why does he want to this... be in a relationship? Being in a relationship has typically like been good for him. No, and I can't deal with like the 40-year-old afraid of commitment. Like, it's been, what, three years since he but got he's divorced? Not it's not that. like he's, He was married. I feel like he's a relationship guy. I don't know. It was a combination of the hair and like he's just, I don't know, he used to be, I felt like this like young, hot, vibrant thing and everything he was doing, it was like giving sad. Yeah. Like even like chasing Tom Sandoval out of the beach to the bars, like you're 40. Like I just, like I just couldn't. Yeah. This is a, a, a weird transitional time for him. I hope this behavior doesn't last until next season, but he is still like Schwartz. Yeah. But what is this adamant about not wanting to be in a relationship? Like why? I know. You want to be just, going to singles events and like and hanging out with twenty five year olds? Like why? Why that sad. literally doesn't look fun. That event did not look fun. I feel like maybe and I don't know if him like distancing himself from Sandoval is just an act for the show, but maybe like his best friend and him are now both finally single for the first time and he like wants to have fun. It doesn't look like they're having fun, is what I'll say. That event was tear worthy. Like it was sad. <laughs> It was. Yeah. Oh, and what about him and Katie both fighting over Tori? Okay. Like, no. <laughs> I, when they had that conversation at the water tasting, which I really don't want to talk about, okay? The water tasting. The bar for, for events is so low. But I actually thought it was sweet. Like, I was like, maybe these two. I actually was like, oh my God, imagine if they got back together. Like, I just thought, like, I really want, like, for them to get along. And this sort of game where they're playing with the with the nanny, like, no. No. No, and it's weird. Like, it's, on a intimate level, like, it's weird. It's weird. And then that's, to like, be Summer dating, Moon's nanny. To be, right. For both of you to be dating your best friend's nanny at the same time and literally, like, making out with her night after night, like, intertwined, like, just... just be together. Get back together. No, and it's like, if if Schwartz likes Tori and Tori likes Katie and Katie likes Tori and Tori likes Schwartz. If A equals B and B equals C, then Katie should like Schwartz. Thousand percent. And Schwartz should like Katie. Thousand percent. James was relatively quiet this episode, but Stan. 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 And Allie too. Yeah. She's solid. Yeah, I could live without the horoscopes, but yeah. It's, it's really like... She takes it so seriously. Like, honestly, it makes me want to take it seriously. No. She takes it so seriously, it makes me want to jump off the roof. Like, I think we should have her on the show and get a reading. I want to know my birth chart. Actually, somebody did tell me yesterday when I was going off on the toast about my obsession with the moon that, like, cancers are very well connected to the moon. So that makes sense. That's what people were saying in the comments. If anybody's friends with Allie, like, tell her we want to know our birth charts. 
Yeah, or anyone who does that doesn't have to be Allie. <laughs> no, but I liked her assessments of the girls. Like, I thought okay. she was pretty spot on. Okay. So that'll be fun. And then we'll do our colors, too. So Dear Toasters has been moved to tomorrow. Jax, I know you have a very busy day of travel, so we'll let you get to where you need to go, which is right here in my heart. Guys, thank you so much for listening to the Toast of the Millennium Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give us a video a thumbs up. We're also available as podcasts anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeart Radio, CastBox, all the places where we listen to podcasts. My also Toast, five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Love you so much. See you tomorrow. Bye.